So I want to kick off with going through some of the changes that Amazon Vendor has really ma recently made to its platform and what it means for you. And then I want to get into some of the insights that we've built here at Merchant Spring, really to take advantage of some of the new APIs and reporting uh, that is now available for Amazon vendors. Last but not least, and exclusively for those that are tuning in today, there is a very special offer that I'll get to towards the end of this session. So make sure to hold out for that. So let's jump into what's new. For those of you that are managing Amazon brand stores, um, sorry, Amazon vendor stores uh, and vendor accounts, you would have noticed a change inside Amazon Vendor Central. And particularly this affects the sales reporting piece uh, on your dashboard. A lot of you would have seen these banners pop up saying a new version of the dashboard is now available. You know, visit Amazon Retail Analytics. That this actually means that Amazon is going to take away some of the brand analytics reports that are that you're used to around sales reporting and replacing it with a new tool called Amazon Retail Analytics. Now, the API set for this and the underlying data is slightly different. So for those of you that have been quite observant, have already noticed that there are slight discrepancies between what Amazon's reporting here versus the new retail analytics uh, dashboards. But the good thing is, when you look at these dashboards, Amazon has made a commitment to say, internally, we will be looking at the same data. So it is something fantastic in that you are looking and analyzing the same data that your Amazon vendor manager will be looking at. Now, the clincher is this, of course, when you look at these reports, it's just a lot of tables, downloading uh, Excel files, CSV, pretty much the same, right, to what you're used to in terms of Amazon Vendor Central. The beauty is that, you know, for the first time, Amazon has actually released a series of APIs for Amazon vendors to actually do something useful and exciteful with this data. And this is what we've been focusing on at Merchant Spring. So what I want to do is really uh, show you how we are using some of these new retail analytics inside our platform to drive insights to help you grow your business with Amazon. So let's have a look at the platform. For those of you uh, that are familiar with Merchant Spring, uh, you know what I'm looking at here, but um, what I want to have a quick, you know, want to give you a really quick overview in that um, I'm here at the dashboard. And as you can see, Merchant Spring allows you to connect all different channels, Amazon seller accounts, vendor accounts, Walmart, over 120 different channels into a single platform for reporting purposes. But I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about uh, Amazon vendor. And of course, the first thing you need to do is to actually connect your Amazon vendor account. Now, that is really easily done. It works the same way as connecting an Amazon seller account. You simply select Amazon vendor and then select the uh, country that your vendor store is located in. Once you authorize, you will actually just see the Amazon login screen and you can use that to authorize the API connection in the background on the spot. One of the uh, advantages of the new APIs for Amazon uh, vendors is that Amazon is using the same selling partner API set for that, allowing us to really use that technology um, to connect stores very, very easily. Now, once those stores are connected, let's have a look at what reports are available for you. So I'm just navigating to the actual Amazon vendor demo account that I've got connected here. And what you can see is you can see a series of reports. In fact, you can see three modules. You'll see the retail analytics module that is the main focus for today. You'll also see uh, a reporting module around purchase orders, you know, giving you an indication of, you know, what Amazon is ordering with you as a vendor and you're looking at and slicing, dicing that in different ways. And then last, we also give you the opportunity to connect your Amazon advertising account. So that's the third module uh, that you see here. 
Today, I'm going to focus on retail analytics and specifically these first three reports, ordered revenue, ship revenue, and sourcing share. Let me talk about ordered revenue first. Let's understand ordered revenue. Ordered revenue essentially is demand signal. It represents the orders that are being placed by Amazon's customers with Amazon. So sold by and fulfilled by Amazon. Um, now this is great because this only affects your products and hence you can see broader trends around, you know, what's the demand for your portfolio as a whole. And you can look at that uh, in terms of revenue. You can look at that in terms of units. And as you can see here, we're also including glance views. So, you know, think of this as the kind of the page views equivalent. You know, Amazon calls it glance views. This is interesting because it allows you not just to look at the demand for your products through the Amazon vendor lens at an aggregate level, but it also allows you to look at that at an individual ASIN level, as you can see in this table below. Now, the reason I think this is interesting uh, is a couple of reasons. You know, first of all, it gives you a really good signal of what products you know, are top sellers versus worst sellers. It's pretty straightforward. But more importantly, it allows you to combine both view data as well as uh, order data to get a conversion rate. And being able to see the conversion rate at an ASIN level, I think is really interesting because it allows you to pinpoint or answer the question, which products should I invest the energy on in terms of improving and optimizing my content? You know, for example, you know, I always like to look at ASINs that maybe have a high number of glance views, but below average conversion rate versus the rest of your portfolio. They are great candidates. If you're going to spend another hour or a couple of hours optimizing content, whether it be images or bullet points or A plus content, those are great candidates to focus on. Don't have to boil the ocean. There's the 80 20 right there. The other thing that are, is really useful in this report, and many brand owners will uh, really focus on this, is monitoring the pricing for which Amazon is selling your products. Now, the price you're getting through from Amazon excludes any sales tax or VAT, but nonetheless, it's starting to give you a really good view on a by ASIN basis. Let's move on to the second part, which is ship revenue. So these are the products that Amazon ships out of its warehouse to its end consumers uh, in order to fulfill that demand. Uh, and actually, as you can see, there are two views to that. There's a sourcing view. That is, that's, those are the products that are being shipped out of your inventory uh, out of Amazon. But you can also look at the manufacturing view, and that is the total amount of products that are being shipped. And that may well include products that has been supplied by other distributors or products that Amazon has sourced maybe from other Amazon countries uh, and using that to fulfill demand. So what this tells you is really around, you know, what are the products that Amazon is shipping the most? Ship revenue, ship units, but, you know, most Amazon vendors will care about ship costs. So as you can see in the table below, it gives you a really clear view of, uh, you know, what items are actually selling and what are the items that are reducing your inventory uh, inside Amazon. The other thing here that is really interesting is the Amazon margin. So we can actually see with great transparency, what is the product margin that Amazon is making on these products? And certainly uh, as part of your you know, business planning with Amazon, if you have agreed to maintain or try and achieve a certain margin, this is a great tool to understand where are you over, where are you under, what adjustments you may have to make in order to help uh, achieve that joint business plan that you've signed up with Amazon. Now, I spoke about sourcing and inventory. Um, there is an opportunity to combine this data for something that's really insightful, and we've called that sourcing share. Sourcing share looks at the question of all the units that were shipped out of Amazon's warehouse, what proportion of those units were not taken from my inventory? So in other words, 
where did Amazon actually decide to ship someone else's supply product from another vendor or from another country? And as a result, as an Amazon vendor, what have I lost out on? You know, and the way we look at that is either in terms of dollar terms, lost cogs, or in terms of lost units uh, as a volume measure. So we'll track that share percentage over time. And here it gives you a great snapshot of what that looks like. In this particular case, uh, this vendor uh, is only shipping 28% uh, of the total shipments in Amazon. So that's obviously not a great stat. Uh, most other vendor accounts I have seen, fortunately, uh, that figure is much, much higher. But of course, the devil's in the detail. And for that, we really need to look at an ASIN or product by product basis, because that's where COGS are gained or lost. Now, as you can see here, we're breaking this down into an ASIN level and we're showing you with the highest opportunities pushed towards the top, you know, what is the lost COGS for each product for a particular time period? How many units did that represent? And what's your sourcing share? And as you can see, and this is sort of common across all these tables, we are measuring also, you know, what the ups and downs were versus the prior period or last year. What we're also showing you here, which is quite interesting uh, and not easily obtained, is not just what your unit cogs are. So what are you charging Amazon for that particular product? But where Amazon's decided to source someone else's product, what is the implied unit cogs of the other party? Could be multiple parties involved but on aggregate what is their uh, unit cogs so it gives you a sense of you know is amazon sourcing products perhaps cheaper from another vendor or from another country and again that gives you a reason to at least have a conversation with your vendor manager and put an action plan in place now last uh, but not least Inventory health is something that is coming very, very soon. I do have a slide on there, I, I think, here. So I'm just going to bring that up just to give you a sense of what's coming there. There it is. Um, what this allows you to do is for the first time see what is happening inside of Amazon with your inventory levels, showing you, you know, how your inventory and your day's cover fluctuates over time, but also how that breaks down uh, at a particular ASIN level. You'll be able to see, you know, what portion of your inventory is sellable versus what portion is deemed to be unhealthy. In other words, inventory that is over and above uh, Amazon's long-term forecast. Uh, you know, you're sitting on a problem potentially there. Um, so again, great insights coming your way. Uh, and this will be uh, released to all of our Amazon vendor users in about two weeks time. So a really quick sneak preview on that. Now, I do want to go back to the, um, I do want to go back to the actual report and um, show you how Amazon actually, um, how we can use the reporting component to report perhaps to upper management inside the app inside your organization, or if you're an Amazon agency, to your clients. So let me show you very quickly how that's done. You'll see there's a reporting section in the tool here, and you have the option of providing generating report for a single channel or a multiple channel. So multiple channels, of course, is great if you're dealing with a hybrid situation where you're having a 3P and a 1P account, and you want to combine those numbers into a single report. But for today's purpose, I just want to look at a single channel, and we're going to pick that Amazon vendor store here. Now, I already had a report saved just to save us some time here, but you can name the report. You can then see what, what frequency do you want to receive it at? You know, do you want, do you want to receive that report daily, weekly, monthly? Um, as you can see, there are some other parameters here around time zone and currency that you can um, report on as well. From there, you can then select the different tables and charts. And as you can see, I've already selected a number here, including some commentary. Um, and there's a whole series left to you there. This is a simply a drag and drop exercise and then the ability to rearrange these as well. Once you save this report, it is safe for that particular channel uh, on an ongoing basis. 
So next time you come back to this particular channel or client or your own account, perhaps, you don't have to resave it again. So uh, what we can do there is um, save it. And then we have the option of sending that report out via our email or having a look at it via HTML. So I'm just going to try and do that now. Uh, I hope this is actually working um, or not. Let's see. It's not working yet. Um, let me see if I can uh, share another screen. We're having clearly a slight technical difficulty, but I might just copy and paste the URL of the report into this screen and see if that works for us. So um, with a bit of luck, we'll see the report generate here, as you can see. Um, there, here is the commentary that I wrote earlier, and we then have a series of elements, chart elements, report elements that report on the performance of this particular Amazon store. This is completely customizable, and I encourage you to play around with it and make sure it is tailored for your particular audience. Um, last but not least, most of our plans include an element of uh, white labeling customization. So very rarely will uh, a client or a vendor see Merchant Spring here. Typically, it's their own logo or it's a complete deep white label. If that's something you're interested in, hit me up via LinkedIn and we can talk more about that um, as we go. Now, um, I've come to uh, the end of our uh, presentation today. Um, and um, before we go, um, I want to quickly go to the audience and um, see what questions and answers we have today. So let's see what we have. So we've got Mark Lupton here. Mark, thanks for joining us. Uh, please confirm if the Amazon margin takes into consideration any agreements within the account or if these are to be added in after. The Amazon margin I just showed you is the pure product margin. So literally revenue minus COGS. Um, so the margin I've showed you does not include it, but Amazon uh, net PPM or the net product, uh, pure product margin is now also available via API. And we're looking to include that in the next few weeks. I think, Kirsten, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, I think I've just answered that, um, but thank you. Uh, that's very, very helpful. Um, I think all the questions were actually about that. Um, so I think I will leave it there. But of course, most importantly, let me get back to this uh, special offer.